P. Uh, once again, welcome to the African History Network show. It is Sunday, November 6, 2022. And we are live calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Um, and we're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. So I was on Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday, November 4th. Uh, we had a really good discussion dealing with the midterm elections. Today we're going to talk about midterm elections and African Americans. What is at stake? And uh, once again, I talked about the uh, document from uh, White, WhiteHouse.gov, the Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black Americans and communities across the country. This document deals with how the policies of the Biden-Harris administration have been beneficial for uh, African-Americans. A lot of people don't know about this. And these policies uh, Republicans have overwhelmingly been against. OK. Uh, one of the things that I posted on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, about as well as our stories on um, our fan page, the African History Network, is this piece here from the New York Times from January 7th, 2021, the day after the January 6th insurrection, the 147 Republicans who voted to overturn election results, the 147 Republicans who voted to overturn election, election results, okay? Can't let people like this take back control of the House or the Senate. You can't let people like this take back control of the House or the Senate. They voted to invalidate the votes of 16.9 million African-Americans, 9.7 million Latinos, and 49 million white Americans who all voted for Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. So we'll discuss that. Um, and then also there was a, a good story that uh, I saw from uh, atlantablackstar.com and i posted an article about this um marla gibbs the legendary marla gibbs who was 91 years young she was on uh sherry shepherd and marla gibbs talked about the iconic tv show uh 227 so she, she's on she was on two icon tv shows the jeffersons which ran from 1975 to 1985 but also 227. And she talked about how she had to fight for, for Mary Jenkins on 227 to be married, you know, and have a husband. Okay. And she had to fight for Hal Williams. We know Hal Williams, uh, who was Officer Smitty on uh, Sanford and Son. She had to fight for uh, Mary Jenkins to be a married woman uh, and, and have a husband. And she fought for, for Hal Williams to be her husband okay we're going to talk about that story and that's reminiscent of esther roll and esther roll's fight to uh for florida evans to be uh married uh with children on good times because the powers that be uh, norman lear and, and others uh the producers of the show good times wanted uh esther roll to be a single mother Okay, with three children in the projects. Now, what's very interesting about that is if you know anything about the TV show Good Times, you know Good Times was a spinoff of the TV show Maud, starring B. Arthur. Maud was a spinoff of All in the Family, created by Norman, you know, uh, produced by Norman Lear. And Maud was Edith Bunker's cousin. Maud had a maid named Florida Evans played by Esther Rowe. Florida Evans was married to a man named on the show, Henry Evans, who was played, uh, they had a different guy playing Henry Evans, then they brought on John Amos to play Henry Evans. Then when they moved to Good Times, he, his name is um, um, James Evans. But Henry Evans, played by John Amos on the TV show Maud, Florida's husband, he was a firefighter. When it comes time for her to have her spinoff show, they don't want her to have a husband. She fought to be married on good times and have a husband. OK, so they brought in John Amos to be to be her husband. Very interesting how they wanted African-American women to be single. They want to erase the African-American man. They didn't want them to be married. I wonder why this I just find that very interesting. 
Um, Eric Monty, who was the co-creator of Good Times, along with Mike Evans, and Mike Evans was the first line on the, on the first line on the Jefferson. Mike Evans' birthday was just uh, a couple of days ago. He and uh, Bel Belinda Talbert, who played Jenny Jefferson, they shared the same birthday. Um, Eric Monty, and you see Eric Monty and Mike Evans' names in the credits at the end of each episode of Good Times. It says created by Eric Monty and Mike Evans. Eric Monty would talk about how Norman Lear would constantly tell him, you have to get rid of that black father on Good Times. A black father on the sitcom is not funny. Now, how is it that John Amos is not funny, but Archie Bunker is funny, Carol O'Connor. It's all right to have a white father on the sitcom. He's funny, but the black father's not funny. Very interesting was what, what transpires in Hollywood. Okay, so we'll discuss that and more today on the African History Network show. Now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So we control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts. You can control the circumference of his or her actions because the mind can't do what it, what it doesn't know. Uh, sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter. Also visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. We have uh, our classes going on. Week this week is going to be Monday and Thursday because uh, I'm headed to Washington, D.C. on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'm going to fly to Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, our election day coverage. OK, so um, you can watch that on um, Facebook and YouTube. Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube. We'll share it on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network as well. Uh, so our classes will be Thursday, November 10th, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And that class is going to be at least 10 sessions this time around. Uh, and uh, also Monday, November 7th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. So you can register for those classes at our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, when we come back from the break, I'm going to share uh, segments uh, with you from uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered. We talked about midterm elections. Listen, listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Back from break in four minutes. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Back from breaking two minutes.
I'm breaking one minute. Three one three seven seven eight seventy six hundred is the calling number if you have a question or comment. Okay, so um, midterm elections are quickly approaching. A uh, lot is at stake. The democracy is on the line. Yeah, Republicans uh, complaining, uh, running around, uh, complaining about inflation, but they don't have policies to uh, actually deal with inflation. And uh, economists on both ends of the spectrum are saying that the, the uh, policies that Republicans uh, most likely will make inflation worse. Okay, we're going to break all this down. Uh, we talked about it on, on uh, Roland Martin and Filbert. And let's go to clip number one. We, so we talked we talk about the job numbers, okay, uh, that came out uh, Friday. 261,000 uh, jobs created in the month of October, 3.7% unemployment rate. Uh, let's go to clip number one, please. All right, thanks so much. Be my pay Hi, it's Stacey Abrams. There's okay, a huge so, fundraising so, so, deadline okay. for House let's Democrats. Go, let's go past the clip. Let's go past the ad. Also, Nola Haynes, uh, PhD, Georgetown University uh, School of Foreign Service. Uh, glad to have all three of you here. Uh, Michael, again, uh, e economics, the economy is the fundamental issue that's at the top of all polls. You look at what, what voters actually care about. Uh, and for the life of me, I don't understand why Democrats have not been going a lot harder at corporations uh, for jacking of the profits. You know, look, I'm here in Houston. In the last quarter, oil companies made one, a $100 billion profit uh, in the last three months. Uh, as a result of uh, jacked up oil prices, uh, when you look at food, when you look at a number of different companies, I mean, these CEOs are on these earnings calls talking about how they're making mo far more money and how they're buying their stock back and uh, re rewarding their shareholders and screwing the customers. Uh, and, so the, and so, again, uh, the Democrats are getting the hit, explaining to people why inflation uh, is so high. Absolutely, Roland. And this goes the conversation you and I have turning and turnout. You have to explain to people voting what they're voting for and what is going on right now. Because Republicans like Kevin McCarthy and, and, and um, the Republican uh, uh, senator from Utah, Mike Lee, are on Fox News lying saying that uh, inflation is because of Joe Biden. It's because of stimulus checks, things like this. No, 54%. Katie Porter has been one of the loudest vocal people on it. Representative Katie Porter of California. 54% of inflation in their calls is because we can about that for the most part at all. One, please, to actually address inflation in the House and it voted against the bill, voted against helping people save money on prescription, energy costs, things like this. And um, I want people to really go way back in time to 2017 and 2018. I know it seems like 100 years ago. This was the last time Republicans controlled the with, with, with these idiots running the government. Republicans are not good for the economy. Lastly, Roland, I'll leave you with this. I talk about this document 
I want people to read this. This is uh, the Biden-Harris administration that advances equity and opportunity for black Americans and communities across the country. It was updated uh, 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 in June 2022. It was updated. This walks you then the American community. Okay, and and so this is a, this, this is got it. Uh, let me go to uh, uh, let me go to uh, um uh, I will that is going uh and and you know, also you talk about as. President Obama did. So soon people are going to actually what they what they did. No, you must toot your own horn. Use that bully pulpit to explain to people how you made their lives. How you and increase wages as well. You kind of. Americans are beating the drum of crime and inflation, crime and inflation, crime and inflation. And I think it's important for the Harris administration to walk people through all of the wins and all the ways that they've made people's lives better and all of the disinformation that they're confronting, because that's the problem. Conversation co-opted. They're, they're being co-opted by the loudest voices, which happen to be Republican voices trying to scare people. A lot of what they're saying, if not all of it, is dishonest and is untrue. I think the Democrats have not done a good job of counteracting that with not only the truth, but the good things to uh, Tuesday. And then you let people know what's actually done. And that's it. I mean, it's that simple. Nola? Um. So I agree with the, what everyone's saying, and I, I f first I have to say that you know my views and opinions, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the United States government, particularly the State Department. With that said, I do believe that when we talk about them, part, part of the messaging problem is people are going to the store and they're seeing you know that their basic needs are in fact higher. So it's easy for the moral left party to say. It's the Biden Harris administration's fault, you know, with and people are not really wanting to hear um the reasons why that is. And so, you know, because of because, you know, the administration and a lot of uh the uh Democrat administration and it's about the policy, you know, to refute the lies, to refute the bomb. Best, at the end of the day, people don't want to hear the policy. They, they, it's easier for someone to wrap their head around. Well, you know what? And was you know, three ninety seven a pound. You know, a few months ago, and nine ninety seven yep. a pound. And it must be the government's fault. And so the last thing I'll say about that, you know, rolling yep. to your point about um, these large companies, I think a lot of laws need to be revisited because I completely completely agree with you. If there's an opportunity to increase um, to increase your bottom line, you're going to do it at any expense. You know what? No one gets to be a billionaire um, many times over being a nice person. I think that a lot of this goes to the way in which our country, economic reasons, will, will favor the big questions who, you know, provide 70 percent of, you know, the revenue into the larger economy. So that's the problem. The 30-70 split, that's the problem. It's been the problem, and that's where the fix needs yeah. to lie. All right, hold tight one second, folks, a break. We right, pause right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was from March the 5th from uh, November 4th, 2022. Watch that full video. Um, Roland Martin on Facebook and YouTube. Rolling. That's 
smart on Facebook and YouTube. Our media app as well. Hey, uh, phone number is 313 778 7600. 313 78 7600. If you have a, a quick question or comment, I want to go to uh, let's look at this piece here from uh, CNBC. Where is the article here? I just had it. Let me close some of this stuff out because I did a broadcast before this show. Um, this article here from uh, CNBC, I, I've talked about Katie Porter, um, Democrat from California, and the uh, hearing where she, the, the House hearing where she was viewing an expert and they were talking about the main call of info, okay? Now, this article is from CNBC.com, um, October 28, 2022. 54% of adults say they have stopped or, no, it's not the one that I want. Uh, I want the one dealing with uh, inflation. Hold on. Inflation is due to corporate greed. 54% of um, inflation is due to corporate greed, corporate profits. Uh, you have corporations who are uh, posting uh, record profit. Uh, also, you have uh, them buying back stock as well. So you have Republicans out here lying, saying that uh, it's uh, Joe Biden, which is an absolute lie. And they don't have uh policies to address um uh, inflation they don't have policies to make inflation better there was one article from uh what was it uh, i think it was salon dot not salon.com it was let me pull up this other piece here there was one article that dealt with uh, uh they asked uh, the senate candidate republican senate candidates about what they do about inflation and they really couldn't tell you what we'll do with this on the other side of the break listen to the african history network show on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes stand by back from breaking four minutes Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by, everybody. Three minutes. How's everybody doing? Sunflowers and John Hill Jr. Oh, bye, everybody. From breaking two minutes.
Back from break in one minute. Well, welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation. All right. Okay. Um, I want to go. This is the article I was looking for. Um, this is from Pol uh, politic, politicsusa.com, I think it is. Hold on. Let me increase the size of this here. Okay. This piece right here. Fact checkers agree with Katie Porter and her whiteboard that corporate profits drive inflation uh, price increases. Corporate profits drive inflation uh, price increases. Okay, this is from uh, Saturday, October 22nd, 2022. Checkers agree with Katie Porter and her whiteboard that corporate profits drive inflation price increases. So, um, the claim is that on average, 11.4% of inflationary prices, inflationary price increases became corporate profits from 1979 to 2019, from 1979 to 2019. On average, 11.4% of inflationary price increases became corporate profits from 1979 to 2019. Now, since the 2020 pandemic, that number has jumped up to 53.9% or 54% if you round it up. Okay, so um, yes, that is correct. Quote, unless, you, uh, unless new data is presented to dispute the Economic Policy Institute and the Roosevelt Institute, there, uh, there are reliable indications that a large portion of price increases are going to profits for large corporations in services like groceries, furniture, and cars. Uh, end quote. 12 News, Channel 12 News, Verify uh, concluded. They point out that while we might assume this is the result of greed, it's difficult to identify a cause. Uh, what we do know is the money is pouring into corporate profits. Since corporations exist to make a profit and have in recent years been open about that being their biggest objective, uh, the objection to the word greed seems a matter of polite linguistics rather than a genuine conundrum. Now, is corporate greed? This this just this just straight up skullduggery corporate greed. That's what this is. Uh, and, and my degree is in business administration, and I'm telling you, this is corporate greed. Okay. Um, the fact, fact check is based on Representative Katie Porter's whiteboard making another appearance this week. Uh, this time to explain that bigger corporate profits account for over half the higher prices people are paying. Bigger corporate profits account for over half of the higher prices people are paying. So this is not because of Joe Biden. This is because of corporate greed. This is what you're dealing with. Then you have the war in Ukraine. Uh, also, uh, but between 25% to one third of inflationary costs uh, are due to the uh, the rising cost of uh, vehicles. And that's that that deals with the microchip shortage okay well democrats with the help of some republicans uh passed the uh chips and science uh bill which will bring back a lot of manufacturing jobs thousands of manufacturing jobs produce microchips here which will bring down the uh, cost of vehicles okay which will help reduce inflation also majority of republicans voted against the uh chips and science uh bill 
Okay, uh, so Representative Katie Porter, uh, bigger corporate profits account for over half. Uh, you, you know what, uh, Mukasina, I'm going to send you this. Um, I'm going to send you the, the the video here. I'm going to send you this video. Uh, cue this up, please. And um, this is uh, Representative Katie Porter. This is from her Twitter page. We'll get this going. Uh, for, uh, hold on, not that one. Let me see. Where is it? Oh, yeah. It's, I just sent you the link to the article from, from uh, Politics USA. And it shows Twitter page in there. Okay, with the video, let's, uh, let's get that queued up, please. I want to play that for everybody. Now, I, I said uh, on Roland Martin's show, and I've, uh, I've talked about this here before, Democrats need to have, they should have T-shirts with this, with, with the slogan, 54% of, corp, uh, of inflationary costs are because of corporate greed with the fact check. They should think that that should be a slogan. That should be in every campaign ad dealing with the economy. Okay. Let me know when we have that queued up, please. Uh, according to this chart, what is the biggest driver of inflation during the pandemic? Okay, we'll come back to that in just a second. Then there's a um, this, there's a good article uh, from which one is this? There's a good article from um, which publication is this? Esquire.com. Esquire.com. So I was reading this on Friday from Esquire. This deals with inflation also, okay? And Republicans have no answer for inflation. No, they don't have policies that are going to address inflation. Republicans claim they'll fix inflation. We asked eight GOP Senate candidates how. Now, this is from November 1st, 2022, okay? Um, it, look. Scroll down and in the article, Mukasina, and you'll see uh, the, the tweet from Katie Porter. And there's a big blue play button right in the in the tweet. OK, Republicans claim they'll fix inflation. We asked eight GOP Senate candidates how just four answered and none of their solutions will make much of a difference for years. Just four of them answered and much and none of their solutions will make much of a difference for years now all these republicans oh uh, uh, stop stop the clip stop the clip stop the clip i'll, I'll cue it up in just a minute i'll introduce and just say all these republicans are out here yelling and screaming about inflation but when you ask them how will your policies help inflation how will your policies reduce inflation? They don't have policies to deal with it. And all the Republicans voted against the Inflation Reduction Act, which will lower the insurance premiums for people. It will cap the cost of insulin for seniors at $35 a month. It will help people save money. You would think that Republicans would vote for that bill and all of them voted against that. We'll, we'll come to that in just a minute here. Because, see, elections have consequences and elections are about choices. Elections are about contrast. You compare these candidates and their policies to the alternative. Um, it's perfectly reasonable for, okay, let me skip over some of this here. Okay, we asked the campaigns of eight Senate candidates in competitive races. J.D. Vance in Ohio. Uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz, that should go back to one of his mansions or something. Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania, Herschel Walker in Georgia. I don't think Herschel Walker can spell inflation. Uh, Blake Masters in Arizona, Senator Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, Ted Budd in North Carolina, and Adam L Laxalt in Nevada. And Senator Mike Lee in Utah. And Mike Lee's on Fox News lying, saying, oh, uh, uh, inflation is Joe Biden's fault. So they asked, um, what is the candidates? They asked them the following. What is the candidate's plan to lower gas prices? What is the candidate's plan to lower gas prices? 
what is the candidate's plan to fight inflation? Okay. Here's what we heard back. The campaigns of Mehmet Oz, Dr. Oz, uh, Senator Mike Lee, Herschel Walker, and Blake Masters did not respond. Now, this is for Esquire magazine. You would think they would want to respond. Hold on, let's back up. You would think they would want to respond so people would know their policies to fight inflation because they're yelling and screaming about inflation, but they didn't even respond. They didn't have a staffer respond, anything. You couldn't copy and paste from your website your plan to fight inflation. Now, usually these solutions came in the form of pointing out horrible things the Biden administration has done. Okay, this is what they say. They talk about Biden's policies, all this stuff, it, 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 it causes inflation, stimulus checks, all this stuff that contributed very little to inflation. None of them talked about 54% of inflation was because of corporate greed. Now, how is that possible? And they want control of the House and the Senate. Now, what they did not mention is global supply shocks tied to the pandemic shutdown, monopoly, monopoly power, not monopoly the game, monopoly power and corporate concentration, corporate profits, the war in Ukraine, OPEC, okay, the oil producing uh, uh, countries, OPEC, housing which is the main driver of inflation through much of 2022 and the lack of housing or the federal reserve. They didn't mention any of that stuff. Okay. Which contributes to inflation, but they're blaming Joe Biden. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. This to the African history network show on Michael M hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Stand by, everybody. Back from breaking four minutes. Back from breaking four minutes. neither party is any count i don't i don't understand what you're saying some people need to go study politics before they come here commenting though that from break in uh three minutes Bad from breaking two minutes. Back for breaking one minute.
Welcome back to the African History Network show. I'm your host, Brother Michael and Hotel. All right, calling numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the calling number if you have a question or comment. Okay, um, I want to uh, go back to uh, this piece. Right before the break, we were talking about um, uh, midterm elections and... Um, talking about this article here from uh, Esquire.com. Um, Esquire asked eight Republicans uh, in the Senate race, asked, they asked them about their plan to fight inflation because all of them are yelling and screaming about inflation. So they say, hey, how are your policies going to fight inflation? Republicans claim they'll fix inflation we asked eight GOP Senate candidates how, which is a legitimate question, okay? How, how will your policies fight inflation? So uh, let's continue. All right, so they did not mention uh, global supply shocks tied to the uh, pandemic shutdown, monopoly power, and corporate concentration. Uh, they didn't mention uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, housing shortages, things like this. OK. Um, let me see. Let me scroll. Down. So you had J.D. Vance, who's an idiot, more pipelines, more drilling permits. Um, so one thing that they show here, more pipelines. If you look at J.D. Vance said, if you look at things like uh, so he's um he's uh running for senate in ohio against representative tim ryan if you look at things like the keystone pipeline shutting down that on day one i think that we really shot ourselves in the foot when it comes to energy prices okay but the fact of the matter is the keystone pipeline would not be operational right now even if president joe biden had not canceled it and it would have carried less than one percent of the oil the world consumes daily okay now senator ron johnson who really needs to be voted out of office said on on president biden's first day in office he also fired the first shot in his war on fossil fuels by canceling the keystone uh xl pipeline uh, that decision cost Wisconsin, a Wisconsin construction company approximately 2,000 union jobs. It signaled the Biden administration's policy of purposely, pur purposefully driving up the price of gasoline and other energy powered by fossil fuels. Okay. Now, um, let's see. That's why the uh, issue permits. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, so you have uh, Adam Laxalt in uh, Arizona. You have, uh, okay, more drilling permits. So the Biden administration is, this is uh, Senator Ron Johnson, conspiracy theorists, uh, theory spreading Ron Johnson. The Biden administration is restricting the issuance of permits and throwing just about every roadblock imaginable in the way of increasing fossil fuel production. But the fact of the matter is President Biden has slowed federal lands drilling permits, but there are 9,000 leases already approved. There are 9,000 leases already approved, okay, to drill. Also, the American Petroleum Institute says, quote, it can take more than five years for some fields to go from discovery to production, end quote. So President Biden's permits would not be yielding energy yet. Meanwhile, the vast majority of American oil and gas is not drawn from federal lands, okay? So read the rest of this. Now, let's look, let's look at uh, clueless Herschel Walker, okay? Um, in, in Georgia, running against uh, Senator Raphael Warnock. Oh, I'm sorry. Herschel Walker's campaign did not respond. I wonder why. He's Herschel Walker was on TV blaming Joe Biden for uh, inflation. But what are your policies to fight inflation? I mean, what do you want to do? Deflate the football to, to fight inflation? Is, is, is that your policy? 
this stuff makes no sense. Okay, so read this one here. Now, I want to go to, uh, once again, name of this article, uh, Republicans claim they'll fix inflation. We asked eight GOP Senate candidates how. Just four answered, and none of their solutions will make much of a difference for years. This is by Jack Holmes, November 1st, 2022, for uh, Esquire magazine. All right, now, I, I want to go to this clip here from, uh, uh, this is Katie Porter. Uh, this is from her Twitter page. This is from a, a, a House of Representative hearing, okay, uh, that took place. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and she was asking an ex expert what is the uh, uh driving force uh, when it comes to um uh, the driving force when it comes to uh, inflation let's go to this clip please yeah, the blue. According, according to this chart okay go ahead and play according to this chart what is the biggest driver of inflation during the pandemic the blue is the, the dark blue is the recent period it would be corporate profits and what is that percentage it is 54 percent, and that number does stay that level of high if you update that number to more recent numbers as well so over half of the increased prices people are paying are coming from increases in corporate profits yes the unit price index is reflected in corporate profits as opposed to other costs and how does that compare to historically to other periods of inflation or over other periods of economic time? As reflected there in other analysis, it is significantly higher in this recovery, 11.5%. And what is it today? Uh, 53%. So I want to make sure everyone in America understands this chart. What is a unit labor cost? The cost of wages and an associated right. work cost. So we could just wages. What is a non-labor input cost? Uh, a variety of things, including um, maintenance and, and investments. Okay, so I I have to buy the buy the stuff to make the widget. I have to have a factory. I have to keep the lights on. I have to hire someone to make the widget. That's this stuff, and this is what I add on on top. Okay, so you're dealing with fifty four percent, and I just find it interesting that uh republicans don't want to talk about that so check out this article here from um check out the rest of this article here from uh politic uh usa.com fact checkers agree with katie porter and her whiteboard that corporate uh profits drive inflation prices that drive inflation price increases this is from saturday october 22nd uh, 2022. All right. We're coming up here on the break in just a second. Uh, I want to go to, oh, when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about, um, the inflation reduction act and how it helps African-Americans. Okay. Very few people, uh, are talking about this. Uh, this is a piece from whitehouse.gov, August 16th, 2022. This is a fact sheet from whitehouse.gov, how the Inflation Reduction Act helps black communities. Also, uh, I'll play another excerpt from Roland Martin Unfiltered from Friday, November 4th, 2022, when I was a panelist there. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking four minutes. Back from break in three minutes.
Bath and Bracket, two minutes. Bad for breaking with it. Not for breaking one minute. and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 910 AM Superstation or Adele Media. we got the topics, the guests, the opinions, and the facts. I'm your host, Brother Michael in Hotel. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the After History Network Show. We're recurring events and history and so much, much more. We're going to give you an update on what's going on. This is about self-preservation. We have to extinguish the fire of life. See, that's just our consequence. Catch it all right here on 910 AM Superstation. Welcome back to the After History Network show. Okay. Um, I want to go to this article here. Uh, let's go to the one from uh, just a second. Let's look at the one from uh, New York Times. Then I want to go to the one dealing with the Inflation Reduction Act. We'll look at the fact sheet in, in the, uh, on the Inflation Reduction Act, how it helps African Americans. Com, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. So this article here from New York Times, from the New York Times, I've talked about it uh, a little bit. I think last Sunday. This is from October 26, twenty twenty two. Republicans denounce inflation, but few economists expect their plans to help. Republicans denounce inflation, but few economists expect their plans to help. Uh, proposed tax and spending cuts by the GOP, which is making a push to take back Congress, are unlikely to bring down rapidly rising prices anytime soon. So Republicans, what they want to do is cut taxes to the wealthy once again, and then and then they want to. Um, uh, Kevin McCarthy is saying, uh, House Minority Leader is saying that they will hold raising the debt ceiling hostage to force Biden to cut to make cuts to. Social Security benefits and Medicare benefits for, for for our elders. And they want to give more tax cuts to the wealthy. That's what they want to do to fight inflation. This article is by Jim uh, Tankersley and Emily Cochran. So Republicans are riding a wave of anger over inflation as they seek to recapture the House and the Senate. Uh, hammering Democrats on President Biden's economic policies, which they say have fueled the fastest price gains in 40 years. Now, they don't want to deal with 
the war in Ukraine by Donald Trump's friend, uh, Vladimir Putin. Republican candidates have centered their economic agenda on promises to help Americans cope with everyday price increases and, and to increase growth, increase the GDP. It just increased by 2.6% for the third quarter also, third quarter of this year. They have pledged to reduce government spending and to, and to make permanent parts of the 2017 Republican tax cuts that are set to expire over the next three years, including incentives for corporate investment and tax reductions for individuals. Now, also, Republicans want to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act as well. They want to fight inflation, but they want to repeal the Inflation Reduction Act which is, is going to help uh, people save money. It's going to help them save money on prescription drugs. Uh, and also the, it creates a 15% corporate minimum tax rate. Okay. Corporations with at least $1 billion in income will have a new tax rate of 15%. Republicans don't want that. So back to this article from uh, New York Times. And they and Republicans have vowed to repeal the corporate tax increases that President Biden signed into law in August of 2022 while gutting funding for the Internal Revenue Service. Now, it's expected that about 50,000 employees of the Internal Revenue Service are going to retire over the next few years, which is why you have to hire more people. You don't wait till they retire. Do you do you wait till 50,000 people retire? And then try to hire people and try to train them? Or you hire people ahead of time, get them trained, so as people matriculate out, it doesn't impact negatively impact services. This is more this is more stupidity. They know that the people are going to retire. So you need to hire them ahead of time. So you can get them trained. And as people matriculate, it doesn't negatively impact services and getting people their refunds things of this nature so while while getting fu funding for the internal revenue service which was given more money to help the united states go after high earning and corporate tax cheats that's what republicans don't they don't want to they don't want them to go after corporate tax cheats and high earners those are their donors quote the very fact that republicans are poised to take back majorities in both chambers is an indictment of the policies of this administration, says Senator Bill Cassidy, Republican of Louisiana, one of the poorest states in the country. Bill Cassidy, if you don't know who he is, he looks like Herman Monster from the TV show The Monsters. Okay, so when you see him, you're gonna think Herman Monster. Okay, just you take a look at him, you think Herman Monster. Okay, he noted uh, he noted that quote: "If you look at the spending that they do on a partisan basis, we certainly would be able to stop that." Okay, now, uh, but while Republicans insist that they will be better stewards of the economy, few economists on the other, uh, few economists on either end of the ideological spectrum expect the party's proposals to meaningfully reduce inflation in the short term. Instead, many economists say some of what Republicans are proposing, including tax cuts for high earners and businesses, could actually make price pressures worse by pumping more money into the economy. But they want to fight inflation. Quote, it is unlikely that any of the policies proposed by Republicans will meaningfully Reduce inflation in 2023 when rapidly rising prices will still be a major problem for the economy and for consumers, said Michael R. Strain, S-T-R-A-I-N, an economist at the conservative American Enterprise Institute. So they talk to they talk to economists on both ends of the ideological spectrum. And they all come to the consensus what Republicans our proposing is not is going to have very little effect on inflation and most likely will make it worse. 
On Wednesday, Republicans on the House Ways and Means Committee held a virtual meeting where they detailed plans to make the 2017 tax law provisions permanent, okay? Trump's tax cuts for the wealthy. Billing the move as a crucial step toward improving the nation's economy, which is which is their their go-to solution to help the economy, give tax cuts to the wealthy. Quote, as we look forward to the strong probability of an upcoming, re upcoming recession, there is new urgency to preserve these pro-growth policies, said uh, member of the House of Representatives Vern Buchanan, Republican of Florida. As they position themselves for midterm elections, Republicans have also indicated that they might try to hold the nation's borrowing limit, the debt limit, the debt ceiling, the nation's borrowing limit hostage to achieve spending cuts. The debt ceiling, which caps how much the federal government can borrow, has increasingly become a fraught arena for political brinksmanship. So they want to hold raising the debt ceiling hostage, which could cause the U.S. to default on debt, which would tank the economy. They want to hold that hostage to force Biden to agree to make cuts to Social Security benefits and make cuts to Medicare benefits, which will hold, hurt elders, our seniors, especially African-American seniors. Do you remember, just a quick question here. Do you remember the last time that Republicans had control of both the House and the Senate? It was in 2017 and 2018. It was the first two years of the Trump administration. Do you realize there were three government shutdowns in two years and Republicans controlled the House, the Senate, and the White House? It, and, and the government shutdown in 2018 was the worst, okay? The, this is the game that can't shoot straight. This, the, these are the people that keep driving the economy into the ditch and you want to give them the car keys again. Multiple top Republicans have signaled that unless President Biden agrees to reduce future government spending, they will refuse to lift the borrowing cap. That would effectively bar the federal government from issuing new bonds, U.S. Treasury bonds, to finance its deficit spending, potentially jeopardizing on-time payments for military salaries. I thought Republicans loved the military. I thought they loved the, 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 the soldiers. Potentially jeopardizing on-time payments for military salaries and safety net benefits like WIC and different things like this, safety net benefits and rolling bond markets. I thought I thought Republicans loved the military, military families and gold star families, all this stuff. You're, you're going to jeopardize getting payments to them on time? You're going to jeopardize payments for safety nets for, for, for people who need help? So you can give more tax cuts to the wealthy and you want control of the House and the Senate. They're telling you what they're going to do. They're not hiding this. President Biden has tried to push back against Republicans and cast the election not as a referendum on his economic policies, but as a choice between Democratic policies to reduce costs on health care and electricity and Republican efforts to repeal those policies. Oh, by the way, most of these Republicans are against the student loan forgiveness that President Biden did by executive order. And that student loan forgiveness, and one of the reasons why they're against the student loan forgiveness is because it's going to disproportionately help African Americans. Because it's going to, it's going to re uh, wipe out the student loan debt uh, for... Uh, it's going to wipe out the student loan debt for a little more than 25% of, of African Americans. It's going to uh, move 500,000 African American families from a negative net, net worth to a positive net worth, from a negative net worth to a positive net worth. And when he added in the Using additional the 10, 000, the when he added in the additional $10,000 for 
if you have Pell Grants and like 72% of African-Americans who go to college use Pell Grants, that was something that was unexpected that really helped us. And, and, and Republicans are yelling and screaming about that. You have Republicans who, who have filed lawsuits to, to, to block the student loan forgiveness. Read this article here from abcnews.com. President Biden announced the student loan forgiveness, okay? And then it goes through, and Give I think it's $10, in this one. $10,000. On. This is not. Okay, I'm trying to, hold on. I'm trying to search here. I pulled this out. What the hell is this? Just a second here. I'm trying to do a, a search for something. You're trying to play this. Okay. Um, the, the uh, all right, now it's time for another break. We'll, we'll deal with this on the other side of the break. List to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. Now from breaking two minutes. Welcome back to the African History Network show. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. All right, call the numbers 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600. Here's the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay, uh, I wanna go back to 
uh, this article here, I want to find the um, the one I was looking for. Uh, news. Uh, Biden is long forgotten to heavily impact uh, black borrowers. I think this is the one that I want. And uh, we were talking about also uh, how Republicans' policies to fight inflation, economists are saying uh, are not going to work and most likely will make it worse. Let's go to, let's see, this article here from ABC News. Okay, Black uh, Biden's loan forgiveness plan to heavily impact black borrowers. 20 million people will have their loans completely wiped out. This is from August 26, 2022. Um, it, okay, so it goes through, okay, nearly 45% of borrowers or 20 million people will have their debt fully canceled, according to the White House. For the remaining 55%, a new plan will offer more relaxed terms for uh, repayment. This means cutting the amount the borrowers have to pay each month in half from 10% to 5% of discretionary income and covering borrowers unpaid monthly interest, among other efforts. Okay, now uh, approximately one in four, the impact on people of color. Several racial advocacy groups have cheered Biden's decision as a step in the right direction. And let me increase the uh, font size of this also. Let's zoom in on this. So approx approximately one in four African-Americans have uh, negative net worth, meaning uh, their total debt exceeds their total assets, said the Civil Rights Group National Action Network. Um, the okay, it's, it's, uh, okay. Uh, the administration expects the first ten thousand dollars of debt relief will uh, move uh, over half a million Black Americans from a negative uh, net worth to a positive net worth. Uh, end quote. More Black students take out loans than white students. Seventy one percent. Uh, black students take out student loans compared to 56%, according to the research organization Education Data Initiative. Black college graduates owe $25,000 more in student debt on average than white students. The Department of Education found in four years after graduation, 48% of black students owe an average of 12.5% more than, uh, than they borrowed, according to uh, Education Data Initiative. Black students make up 72% of Pell Grant recipients. African-American students make up 72% of Pell Grant recipients, according to uh, the Department of Education. A typical uh, black borrower will see his or her loan balance cut nearly in half, and more than one in four black borrowers will have their balance forgiven. From this one policy right here, according to the White House, from this one policy right here, Black women in particular carry a disproportionate burden in student loan debt. They hold nearly two thirds of the nearly $2 trillion outstanding uh, student loan debt in the US according to uh, data from the census. Now, only about seven, only 7% 7 of student loan debt is in, access, in excess of $100,000, okay? Just so people know. Uh, so read the rest of this article here because this deals with how this policy is positively going to impact African Americans that have student loan debt. Republicans are filing lawsuits to block the student loan forgiveness. Okay, then you had five Republicans in the Senate to introduce a bill. They wanted to strip President Biden from the ability to forgive student loan debt. Imagine that. After over seven hundred billion dollars in uh, paycheck protection loans were forgiven. And you had a lot of Republicans that had their paycheck protection loans were given. The average paycheck protection loan for, for businesses was about $107,000. That's the average paycheck protection loan. But they want to block people from getting student loans for giving, giving between $10,000 and $20,000 for giving for a student loan. People trying to better themselves. They want to block that from taking place. Okay, re read the rest of this uh article here from the New York Times. Republicans denounce inflation, but few economists expect their plans to help. 
This is from October 26, 2022 from uh, the New York Times. And we'll post this link right here. Okay, I want to go back to uh, this clip from Roland Martin Filter. We're going to go to clip number two here, uh, Mukasina. Uh, and so in clip number two, we were discussing um, the economy. Once again, we we're discussing um, uh, midterm elections. Go back to this here. We do, hold on just a second. Stop the clip. Hold on. Stop the clip. Just, just cue back up. And I'm, uh, I'm still introducing the clip. Um, we were uh, discussing uh, midterm elections and we were discussing the economy. Okay. Um, and, and we were talking about uh, what is at stake here. Okay. We're going to uh, let's see. We'll start this at the uh, 47, 40. Oh, so he, he uh, Roland was in, on location in uh, Texas and he was speaking with a, a member of the Texas government. And what we were talking about was uh, the fact that uh, Democrats have to have constant engagement. They have to build an infrastructure and have constant engagement with various communities. OK, and I bring up the fact how uh, Republicans have been making inroads into the Latino community by setting up information centers in the Latino community and and doing outreach. OK, uh, let's go to clip number two, please. You may not want to hear this. Uh, I said, I don't want them sending any money to candidates or to parties. It should be going to third party groups like Black Voters Matter that put the money on the ground to turn our people out. Because part of the problem here, because we had to be at the, uh, the polling uh, from Terrence Woodbury earlier this week from Hit Strategies, that a number of black surge voters from 2020 say once the election was over, no, they never heard from anybody. And I said, we must have a 365-day strategy where we are keeping our people apprised of policies that are going on, touching them, informing them, and see, and not trying to restart something when the election uh, comes around. And unfortunately, if we're waiting on the Democratic National Committee or the DCCC, DSCC, and I've said it before, those are white strategists who are controlling those dollars, and we're giving money to them and then begging for the money to come back to us. And I'm saying, enough is enough. Let's send it to third-party groups who are going to put that money in black communities. Right. I'm not going to disagree with that the principle of that. I think that far too often many of these groups take us for granted, us being black folks. I've talked to Bishop Dixon and, and, and Clyde Cummins and others about making sure that we have an apparatus that works around the clock to engage the black community. We cannot be an afterthought. We cannot be, oh, elections around, let's go back to the black community. We have to be at the forefront because we're the foundation. We're the bedrock of the Democratic Party. And we're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being taken for granted. So we do need more organizations like Black Voters Matter. And that's why I was happy to agree, Cliff, uh, when he came here for the bus about two weeks ago at Houston, he was a, a great asset. But well, it's not a either or, it's both and. I think we need to strengthen the Democratic Party. We need to make sure that more African Americans are there in decision making. And that is why many of us, including Carole Robinson, the chair of the Texas Coalition of Black Democrats, demanded that the state party get an African American. We were able to get uh, a brother there, Jamar Brown. So we need but, more. But, 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 us, but even, even when we have folks who are in those positions, they still don't necessarily have power. Well, we, we I, I mean, that. I, I'm, my whole deal is this is what it boils down to: who controls the money? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so I've I've dealt with folks, uh, D Triple C, DSCC, yeah. DGA, all of them. And again, they got black folks who's the money. Even in a lot of these campaigns, even in these campaigns where you have black Senate candidates, right? Uh, it's been hard as hell uh, pulling out dollars targeting black. What has to happen between now and two and once once we get past two? Sure. And I know for a fact right now that there are a group of black men who are preparing to send a scathing letter to all of those Democratic constituencies, making it clear that they better have a black male strategy uh, as it. well and actually fund it. We talked about that. Bishop Dixon will tell you we had a, a group call for black men with a 
and faith-based leaders because far too often, and I love our sisters, but they're leading the pack. Black men have been left out, left out of that conversation. So we do need to do that. We need to do a full autopsy on what is right and what is wrong. And unfortunately, many of our brothers have been left out, and we got to pull them up. We can't let, let them hang in, in the wings. We do that. So I agree. We need to do a full autopsy, and we need tangible solution going forward. I'm, I hope that we great do great on November 8th, but... I want us to do a, a full autopsy in terms of what do we would go wrong? How can we improve? What can we do better? From all the way from Biden, uh, all the way down at the local level, we, we need systemic change. We cannot continue to have disparities within our own party. That is why it takes conversations like this and demanding. We're not going to say, hey, right. can you get us? No, we're demanding. Is it? Representative Reynolds, I appreciate it. Man. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Fred. Bye. Good to see you. Uh, Noel, I want to start with you. That particular point we were just making about having an infrastructure of that that exists beyond the election. And look, I've been saying this for years, that the election is the end of one process and the beginning of another. Why doesn't every home in the okay. U.S. Have just pause it right there. Pause it right there. Uh, we're coming up on a break here. And uh, we'll pick this up uh, when we come back from the break, okay? And he was speaking with Representative Reynolds. Uh, he, Roland was in Texas. And, you know, I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, but I sure as hell ain't stupid. I can see whose policies uh, are, are more beneficial for African Americans, and I can see who overwhelmingly keeps voting against our own interests, okay? Uh, when we come back from the break, I'll play the rest of that clip as well. Listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by, back from break in four minutes. Okay, how's everybody doing? Uh, who we have here? Okay, Michael, Matthew, Sunflower, John Hill, just a few of the people watching. Okay, share this broadcasting on social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. Back from break in two minutes. Back from breaking one minute.
Welcome back to the African History Network show. Okay, um, I want to go back to the uh, clip here from Roland Martin and Filtered, and we were discussing uh, midterm elections and African Americans, and more importantly, we're, we're talking about uh, being able to um, finance some of a lot of these efforts on our own. Uh, as well and not relying upon the Democratic Party. I'm neither Democrat nor Republican. I'm definitely not stupid, though. And I've said before, we have to have an internal infrastructure that educates African-Americans on politics, law, history, and um, the economy. And we can't wait on a, a political party to do that, do that. But also, we have to be able to fund a lot of our own campaigns without waiting on uh, the Democratic Party, the DCCC, to fund certain candidates. We have to have an economic infrastructure that allows us to do that. I know there's a black pack out there and they put millions of dollars into, I don't, I don't know how much they put into midterms. I know into the 2020 presidential election, they put millions of dollars into that. We have to have more things like that where we control the money and we don't have to ask uh, permission from somebody else. Okay, uh, let's go back to this clip, please. Nola, you on mute. My, too bad, y'all, my bad. No, um, you on mute. Lord have mercy. Go ahead. Right, you knew all those folks need to learn how to use, you knew all those folks need to learn how to use your computer. Instagram and I didn't want to interrupt your little conversation, okay? That's what happened. Why are you right. on Instagram in the middle of the show? You were busy. I'm not that. That's what black women do. Can I can I answer the question? No, let me make your comment, please. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you can answer the question later. Black Go ahead. Speaking of black women, the whole time I'm listening to y'all those conversations, I'm thinking about higher heights. And I'm thinking about how they have engagement yearly around the clock. We are always thinking about, you know, women to advance, to run for office. It is always engagement, you know, from Sunday brunches to always talking about, you know, going out there and talking about the organization and also lifting up the voices of women who are running around the country. And so I completely agree. I love the infrastructure. I love the engagement. It doesn't feel like you're just knocking on my door because you need something. It actually feels like I'm a part of something and it feels like something that you know, actually has weight to it. It's not just this thing where, you know, that family member calls you up because they see you on television. And that's how we've been, you know, traditionally have been treated in politics because for the large, you know, for the larger part, you can count on our vote to vote in a particular direction. But at the end of the day, you know, people need some TLC, you know, you need a little massage, you need a little dinner, you know, don't just show up because you want something. And so I completely agree. I think infrastructure is important. Uh, Michael, when we're talking about these uh, these elections, uh, again, uh, if you're having to restart the wheel every time there's an election cycle, uh, it makes it more difficult. But if you are consistently engaging people, now they are involved in the process. Absolutely. And, you know, Roland, I, I, when I was on uh, Faraji Muhammad's show um, a couple weeks ago, the culture here on the Black Star Media Network, I talked about this and I've said this before, you know, your show as well. We have to have an African-American political infrastructure that we control and finance that educates our people politically, edu educates our people on politics, how politics works, educates them on the law, et cetera, uh, so we can mobilize our people when it comes to election time. But it's something that is continuous. It's not a start and stop. The other thing is, is that for this um, uh, 2020 election cycle, these past two years, uh, there was a, a story on MSNBC about this. Uh, the GOP has been financing in Latino communities. They've been financing these uh, welcome centers, information centers. They're brick and mortar centers in uh, various communities, and, and they do outreach to especially the Latino community. OK, uh, they have movie nights. They educate them on uh, politics and issues and things like this. And it's not that the, the Republicans policies are better, but they're the ones who are making the outreach to various people in the Latino community. And sometimes they're the only ones making the outreach. OK, and, and Democrats have to do the same thing in the African-American community continuously. 
and also the Latino community as well. So um, this is voting is the end of one process and the beginning of a much longer process between those two years and four years. So th this is extremely critical. Michael, I'm sorry, sorry, Matt. The only thing I would add is that I wonder how you not only continue to build that infrastructure, but how you uh, become more effective at communicating to people what the end result of these policies are and why it's so important to vote for particular candidates and particular ideas. I hear so often people say, you know, it doesn't matter. My vote doesn't matter. You know, we talk about that a lot on the show, but I think one of the things that's missing, not only uh, through a consistent push, is making information more digestible to people. And I think part of it is, look, people have to be motivated to find it. I get that. But I think one of the other problems is we're always kind of talking to ourselves. We're not talking to people who are not, you know, either politically inclined or who are going to follow uh, politics and campaigns and, and various issues. So I think we have to be better of finding a way to make people understand that voting for that local bond package is what turns into your pothole getting filled on your street. Like once people understand that marriage of things, I think they're more inclined to be involved. And I think that has to be an integral part of that infrastructural push that you're talk I'm talking about. <clears throat> well, well, that's why you heard me say for the longest, we need to have Schoolhouse Rock 2.0 uh, or citizenship training classes uh, to teach folks basic civics. Uh, folks uh, here, right. this is the cafe. Okay. Joining me now is uh, Harris County okay. Commissioner, uh, right former now. state senator, uh, right Rodney. Okay, pause it right there. Stop the clip. Just a second, everybody. Okay, you can stop the clip, please. Stand by. Okay, uh, I'm waiting for them to stop the clip. Stop the clip. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay, so I want to go to, uh, let's look at this uh, article quickly here um for the inflation reduction act now somebody said we got to get something for our vote i don't know where you've been the past uh hour and 20 minutes we've been dealing with how the policies from the biden harris administration to helping african americans i don't know if you missed the clip the segment where we dealt with the student loan forgiveness and how that is greatly beneficial to african american families and 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 uh uh black student loan borrowers I, I don't understand this uh read this article biden's loan forgiveness plan to heavily impact black borrowers august 26 2022 abcnews.com if we look at this piece here from forbes.com dealing with the inflation reduction act and then we'll look at the fact sheet of how the inflation reduction Act will help the african-american community because that's what we do here we're not one of these other shows out here that um do with all this simple sounding ass nonsense we provide you with facts and evidence because proper documentation ends all conversation the inflation reduction act is now law here's what it means for you this is by kellyanne smith um from uh, forbes.com uh it goes through and to make a long story short what is the inflation reduction act the inflation reduction act is a slim down version of the build back better bill which aimed to make historic investments in the nation's social safety net, to make historic ex uh, investments in the nation's social safety net. Uh, the new bill uh, makes the largest investment in combating climate change. Climate change disproportionately negatively impacts African-American communities. Uh, in combating climate change, climate change in U.S. history, it lowers the cost of prescription drugs and raises taxes on corporations. Here are the big provisions. Creation of a 15% corporate minimum tax rate. Corporations with at least uh, $1 billion in income will have a new tax rate of, 15, of 15%. Taxing corporations with a $1 billion in income 
will pay for this bill. Okay, will pay for this bill. Taxes on individuals and households will not be increased. Stock buybacks by corporations will face a 1% excise tax. Prescription drug price reform, one of the most significant provisions of the Inflation Reduction Act, will allow Medicare to negotiate the price of certain prescription drugs, bringing down the price bringing down the price beneficiaries will pay for their medications. Medicare recipients will have a $2,000 cap on annual out-of-pocket prescription drug costs starting in 2025. Um, IRS tax enforcement, the IRS has been sounding the alarm for years about being underfunded and being unable to deliver on its duties. The bill invests $80 billion in the nation's tax agency over the next 10 years because they're going to hire, they have to hire 50,000 people because, uh, let's see, they're hiring either 50,000 or 80,000, something like that, because there's going to be tens of thousands of people that are going to retire over the next few years. They're going to matriculate out. So you got to hire people, and plus they want to improve services and decrease the amount of time that people have to wait to get refunds. The Affordable Care Act, the ACA, okay, Obamacare, subsidy extension. Currently, medical insurance premiums under the ACA are subsidized by the federal government to lower premiums. These subsidies, which were scheduled to expire at the end of this year, 2022, will be extended through 2025. Approximately 3 million Americans could lose uh, health insurance if these subsidies were not extended. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. You listen to the African History Network show on Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by, back from breaking uh, four minutes. Stand by. Staff breaking three minutes. Breaking one minute, stand by.
Welcome back to the Happy History Network show. Okay, um, let's see. I just sent you clip number three, Mukasina. Uh, cue that up, please. We're going to go to that. That is uh, from Roland Martin Unfiltered. And he was asking us our closing statements when it comes to uh, the importance of, uh, in, in midterm elections and what is at stake. So we'll go to that in uh, just a second here. Um, check out this document from uh, whitehouse.gov. Uh, this deals with how the Inflation Reduction Act that no Republicans in the House or the Senate voted for, how it impacts the African-American communities. Because here we deal with facts and evidence, okay? And how many people have shown this document to you? People need to go to whitehouse.gov. The information is there. Now, the White House needs to do a better job of communicating, but we need to do a better job of reading. How the Inflation Reduction Act uh, helps black communities. We just ho highlight a few things here. Uh, okay, lower health care costs. The, the, the IRA Inflation Reduction Act will lower health care costs, including prescription drugs, and expand health care, expand health insurance coverage for African American families. It'll lower prescription drug costs for seniors. Americans pay two to three times uh, more for their prescription drugs than people in other wealthy countries among adults 65 and older. Black Medicare beneficiaries were roughly 1.5 times as likely as white beneficiaries to have trouble affording medications and about two times as likely to not need a prescription, to, to not feel needed prescriptions due to cost. Uh, about, uh, about two times as likely not to feel needed prescriptions due to cost. Um, Okay, then uh, it caps the amount that seniors will have to pay for prescription drugs. Uh, they buy at the pharmacy at $2,000 a year. Uh, it caps the amount that seniors will have to pay for insulin at $35 per month. So this deals with, uh, you know anybody with diabetes? You know any seniors, African-American seniors with diabetes? This helps them. It provides access to a number of additional free vaccines, including the shingle vaccine for Medicare beneficiaries. It will further lower uh, prescription drug costs for seniors by allowing Medicare to negotiate the price of high cost drugs and requiring drug manufacturers to pay Medicare uh, a rebate. OK, it lowers health insurance premiums and expanding coverage. Uh, it combats climate change and, and lowers energy costs as well. It provides a savings per family each year. It makes home uh, efficiency upgrades more affordable. Uh, okay. Uh, it creates economic opportunities and jobs as well. Uh, so go read through the rest of this uh, here. Okay. I, I want to go to this uh, clip here from um, uh, Roland Martin and Filter. These were our closing statements. Uh, let's go to this clip, please, uh, Mukasina. All right, folks, welcome back. Roland Martin on the the Black Star right. Network. I'm voting for Prop 3 because... Okay, let's get past the ad. Let's go back to this. All right, um, so we'll get past the ad in just a second. Just press play when you have it ready. And um, we were explaining what's at stake in the midterm elections. Okay, do we have it queued up? All right. Final comments uh, here. This is, of course, uh, last time y'all will chat with us before uh, voting takes place on Tuesday. Uh, and so, Nola, uh, make, make the case uh, for, for somebody sitting out there right now uh, who is uh, undecided about going and vote. What are you, what you have to say to them? The vote is very simple. If you are undecided, think about if you want rights, think about if you want freedom, if you want to wake up in a country where freedom is actually respected. Think about if you want to wake up in a country where women do not have to worry about what they look like or what they say. Think about if you want to wake up in a world that's moving forward and not backwards. And it's really just as, as simple as that. There are people who want us to move backwards. And that means if we're moving backwards, if women's rights are um, trampled upon, that means other rights are going to be trampled upon. Affirmative action is on a chopping block. That means perhaps interracial marriage is on a cho chopping block. That means perhaps uh, integration is on the chopping block. And then we don't know how much further um, people are willing to go. So fight 
like your life is on the line, fight like your children's lives are on the line, and fight like your grandchildren's lives are on the line, because it really is. All right, no, we sure appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Matt? Look, uh, they work for us. We don't work for them. And what we have to remember is that when we go to the ballot box, we tell them whether we want to keep them in that job and or who we want to replace them with. So your vote is crucially important because if you don't go and vote, then you don't get to have a say on who's representing you. And beyond that, as we've talked before, the reason you go and vote, particularly in down ballot races, is because if you want that pothole filled, if you want better books for your kids' school, if you want better options as it relates to government programs, you have to go and speak your voice at the, the ballot. So we need to get out of this idea that, you know, they just make decisions in some far off land and give us what they decide to give us. It doesn't work that way. They work for us. We don't work for them. So in order for them to do the job that we need them to do, we have to tell them how we feel about the job that's being done. And we also have to tell them what we need. So make sure you know everything about local propositions, local bonds. Um, a lot of those things that seem like Greek to us, a lot of times are the most important because they'll tell you how your city is going to fund the street budget or whatever you know issue you have uh, for the next 10 years. So make sure you know what the issues are. Make sure you know who's running. Make sure you go vote. There are too many people who lost their lives for us to have the right to vote, for us to squander it. Rolling shirt is perfect. So make sure you do right by the ancestors and go exercise your vote that they fought, bled, and died for. X. Michael. Well, politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, the adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. You don't vote for exercise, you vote for power. And when we look at what's happened in this past administration, there have been numerous policies put in place, numerous bills passed to benefit African Americans, $5.8 billion for HBCUs in 2021, a record amount of funding for HBCUs. When we look at the $1.9 American Rescue Plan that saved the economy, that helped African Americans, whether it was stimulus checks, whether it's $46.5 billion when it came to rental assistance, whether it was uh, funding for to hire more teachers, whether it was also the uh, $4 billion in um, uh, debt forgiveness for African American farmers, Latino farmers, et cetera. Now, white farmers sued to block that. That's going to be uh, handled in the court. But if it was not for people like Senator Raphael Warnock, uh, who helped put that in the bill, you would not have that. You, get, you have the Inflation Reduction Act. You have the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill, the first anti-lynching bill in the history of this country. It took 122 years to get that. That happened under this administration. You have student loan forgiveness. 500,000 African-American families are going to be moved from a negative network to a positive network. It's going to wipe out the remaining student loan debt for a little more than 25 percent of African Americans who hold student loans. So there's so much that's that's taking place, executive orders on policing, uh things of this nature. So um do your research. Once again, this document people said they couldn't see it before. Uh the Biden Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black Americans and communities across the country. Whitehouse.gov is last updated June 19th, 2022. It's 22 pages. It walks you through step by step. It walks you through step by step how the policies of the Biden Harris administration are helping African Americans. Okay, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. We're going to keep going for a few more minutes. We're done here on 9 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF. Watch me on Roland Martin's uh, six hour uh, uh, coverage, six hour election day coverage as well. And uh, we'll have the information at theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Right now, it's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Okay, stand by. Uh, stand by, everybody. Let me go back to this here because uh, we're done with 910. Uh, let me go back to this uh, right here. And uh, I'll show you the document that I was talking about as well. Okay, let's go back to this. Oh, student loans. So there's so much that's that's taking place. Executive orders on policing, uh, things of this nature. So um, do, do your research. Once again, this document, people said they couldn't see it before. Uh, the Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity 
for black Americans and communities across the country. White House is last updated June 1982. It's 22 pages that walks you through step by step, shows you how it makes a direct connection between the policies from the Biden Harris administration and how they're helping the African American community and compare them to Republicans because they have voted against most of these policies and, and, and are trying to take us back and block more policies being put in place that are beneficial to us. Yeah. All right, then, Michael, I appreciate it. So, uh, Nola, Michael, and Matt, uh, thanks a bunch. I appreciate y'all joining us on today's show. Vote, All Roland. right. Okay, so that is uh, from Roland Martin Unfiltered, and um, his his uh, election day uh, coverage starts uh, November, Tuesday, November eighth, six p uh, seven p.m. seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time to one a.m. Okay, I'll be in studio. I fly to uh, Washington D.C. Tuesday morning, and. Um, so we definitely appreciate uh your support uh, you can support us if you like this type of information and uh, you want to support the african history network dollar sign the ahn show through cash app dollar sign the ahn show through cash app also through paypal paypal.me forward slash the ahn show this helps us keep doing the research stay on the air uh pay some of the bills it helps me when i have to pay to travel because i gotta uh, i'm paying my own way uh to dc and I wanted to be in studio for this uh, marathon broadcast. Uh, they're doing a seven-hour broadcast. So uh, it'll be my first time at the studios for the Black Star Media Network. But I wanted to make sure uh, I did not miss this. So we have the uh, information on the homepage of our website for PayPal and Cash App. Then register for the uh, online classes I teach. So we'll have classes this week, uh, Monday, or we'll see, Thursday, November 10th. Uh, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kim at the Moors, my offer, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade with a Den Teacher in School. This class is going to be either 10 or 11 sessions this time around, okay? Uh, originally, I was trying to do eight, but uh, no, it's going to be 10 or 11 sessions. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it any time. It's going to sell $80, regularly $130. And then on Monday, November 7th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we'll do uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. The, the class is uh, uh, the same format. Okay. Now I want to uh, I'm going to show you this, and we we will get out of here. So let me post the information here for on the thread of the broadcast for the online classes. Uh, you can register for those. You can also use this information with your children. I would say the information is uh, PG-13. It's not overly graphic. And, uh, it's not vulgar. I don't, I don't do a lot of cursing or things like that. Uh, and let's see, let's post this information here as well. Uh, I'm going to show you this document. I've talked about it before. We hit some of some of the uh, points that's in it. This is the 22 page document. Now, who who has been showing this to you besides me? I don't know anybody else that's talked about this document. Reverend Al Sharpton hasn't talked about it. I'm the one that told him about it when I was on his show about three months ago. He had me as his co-host uh, for two hours on his radio show. I haven't heard Joanne Reed, Tiffany Cross, anybody talk about this document. T Tiffany Cross um, is let go of from uh, MSNBC that didn't renew a contract. That's a tragedy. But this right here, fact sheet, the Biden-Harris administration advances uh, equity in the... Uh, the Biden-Harris administration advances equity and opportunity for black Americans and communities across the country. This was last updated June 19th, 2022. Before that, before June 19th, it was updated February 28th, 2022. Before that, it was updated October 2021. It walks you through category by category how these policies are helping us. These policies here overwhelmingly Republicans voted against and are trying to block or trying to repeal, okay? Don't compare. I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, but I sure as hell ain't stupid. Don't compare Democrats to perfection. Don't compare them to the almighty. Compare them to the alternative. The alternative are Republicans and their policies, which are detrimental and will tank the economy. OK, um, you have to look at whose policies are, are, are most beneficial for African-Americans, whose policies will do the least amount of harm, who can create a, an environment for you to push your agenda the farthest and get the most accomplished. Which candidate can you push the farthest to get the most uh, accomplished? Okay, 
who will protect gains that were already been made have already been made who will protect gains that have already been made this is extremely important we understand the concept of protecting gains okay you vote people uh back in the office who overwhelmingly keep voting for your interests you vote people out of office who keep blocking your interests and voting against your own interests okay so uh this is a, a, a crucial midterm election this is uh the first midterm election after an insurrection since the 1876 midterm election the year after the civil war ended so this walks you through step by step leveraging federal procurement to help black entrepreneurs and black families build wealth so it deals with uh, federal contracts uh extending a lifeline to struggling small businesses uh ensuring black homeowners get full value for their homes in march 2022 by the harris administration interagency task force on property appraisal uh property appraisal and value equity released uh the pave action plan which represents the most wide-ranging set of reforms ever put forward to advance uh equity in the home appraisal process uh the uh, action plan details a set of more than 20 communities uh, sorry more than 20 commitments and actions across all stages of the value process including making the appraisal uh, industry more accountable empowering consumers with critical information and assistance if they receive a valuation that is lower than expected so we hear these stories about african america's home homes being devalued and then they have uh, when the appraiser comes white appraiser because 97 percent of appraisers are white and then they have a white friend send in the uh, pretend to be the homeowner and the home value shoots up a hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand dollars or more okay this is designed to address that 90 you have to have also diversification when it comes to uh the home appraisers because 97 percent of them are white protecting black americans access to housing by combating housing discrimination helping black americans stay in their homes okay uh so go through and read all this because all this is pretty detailed i'm just hitting i'm just highlighting what's in bold print assisting black landowners and resolving title issues an estimated 60 percent of black uh owned land in uh the south is heirs property property that passes through inheritance without a will and that as a result has historically rendered owners ineligible for u.s department of agriculture programs including lending read the rest of that dismantling barriers to access to uh, accessing usda programs and services u.s department of agriculture that's for farmers reducing barriers for black communities facing natural disasters okay in september 2021 fema implemented policy changes to reduce barriers that contributed to disparities experienced by uh, black americans through programs that provide individual assistance to disaster survivors supporting child care providers and reducing child care costs for black families this is huge supporting child care providers and reducing child care costs for black families african-american families are nearly two times more likely than white parents to have to quit turn down or make a major change in their job due to child care disruptions the american rescue plan provided a 39 billion dollar lifeline to help to help child care providers stay open and compensate early childhood educators as they provide safe and healthy environments for children and help parents work no republicans in the house or the senate voted for the 1.9 trillion dollar american rescue plan states have already delivered american rescue plan stabilization grants to more than 190,000 child care providers one in five of whom are african-american more than 190,000 child care providers one in five 20 percent are african-americans serving more than 8 million children and their families read the rest of that advancing equitable employment outcomes and boosting wages for black federal workers okay on june 25th 2021 president biden signed an executive order on advancing equity uh advancing diversity equity and inclusion in the federal workforce this executive order launched a whole uh w-h-o-l-e whole 
of government initiative to cultivate a federal workforce that draws from the full diversity of the nation. Okay. Further in 2021, President Biden signed a series of executive actions leading to a $15 minimum wage for employees of federal contractors and federal employees. Okay. Employees of, so he raised the minimum wage for federal uh, uh, contractors, employees of federal contractors, and for federal employees. 18% of federal employees are African Americans. 18% of federal, we over index working uh, for the federal government. 13.6%, almost 14% of the US population, 18% of the federal employees. This action will impact more than 370,000 workers uh, in 2022 alone, a population that is disproportionately African American and takes a step towards addressing long standing wage disparities, ensuring equitable uh, educational opportunity in K 12 schools and an education beyond high school. Okay, historic investments to safely reopen schools and address the needs of students so, so African American parents could send their children back to school so they can go back to work. The American Rescue Plan provided $130 billion to help elementary and secondary schools safely reopen and address the academic, social, and emotional and mental health needs of all students with funding set aside to address the needs of students disproportionately impacted by the pandemic, including black students. Read the rest of that. There's a lot more. Ensuring school districts have the COVID-19 test resources they need to test students and staff and keep transmission low protecting stu uh, students from funding cuts protecting students from funding cuts the american rescue plans elementary and secondary uh, school uh, emergency relief program includes a first of its kind maintenance equity requirement to ensure that high poverty school districts and schools are protected in the event of state or local education funding cuts. Read the rest of that. Increasing funding for schools and low-income communities. The fiscal year 2022 omnibus uh, included an additional $1 billion in funding for Title I, Title I schools, the largest increase in over a decade, which, which provides funding for schools serving students in low-income communities. The president's fiscal year 2023 budget includes an additional $19 billion for Title I schools, addressing long-standing funding disparities between under-resourced schools, which disproportionately serve uh, Black students, and their wealthier counterparts. Their wealthier counterparts, reducing college costs to help low- and middle-income students overcome financial barriers to an education uh, to an education beyond high school, the Biden-Harris administration secured a $400 increase to the maximum Pell Grant uh, award, making the upcoming maximum uh, grant amount a total of $6,895. This means that students, particularly students at HBCUs, tribal colleges and universities, and minority-serving institutions, MSIs, will be seeing more money in their pockets to pay for college starting this July 1st, July 1st, 2022. Providing historic support for historically black colleges and universities, historically black colleges and universities. The Biden-Harris administration has delivered a, his, a historic $5.8 billion cumulative investment in the support of HBCUs, including the American Rescue Plan and other pandemic relief programs have provided approximately $3.7 billion to HBCUs since President Biden took office. In April 2021, the Department of Education provided approximately $1.6 billion in debt relief to 45 HBCUs, including 13 public institutions and 32 private institutions. In July and August of 2021, the Department of Education awarded more than $500 million in grant funding to HBCUs for academic capacity building and fiscal stability. HBCUs have never gotten that type of funding in one year. Investing in equitable uh, uh, workforce training, okay, um, improving health outcomes of black communities, lowering healthcare costs, 
pro uh, protecting black maternal health, which is big. Uh, and Vice President Kamala Harris has been leading the way on this. The, administ the administration is also committed to protecting black moms and improving maternal health outcomes, including addressing the unacceptably high rates of maternal uh, mortality and morbidity. African-American women are almost four times as likely to die during childbirth. OK, the uh, administration has approved over a dozen state requests to extend Medicaid postpartum coverage for 12 months, including requests to take up the uh, new state option under the American Rescue Plan. Read the rest of that. Uh, OK, uh, promoting mental health for black youth uh, as well, proposing rules to significantly reduce tobacco related disease and death. Increasing cultural competence for black Americans with disabilities. Building the pipeline of black health care providers. The administration has made a historic one point five billion dollar investment to help grow and diversify the nation's health care workforce and bolster equitable health care in the communities that need it most during the COVID-19 pandemic and in the years to come. OK, read the rest of that. There's more. I just I don't have time to get through all this. Uh, this is, now compare this. Don't compare this to perfection. Don't compare this to what we didn't get. Compare this to what we got. Now compare this to what Republicans are proposing and compare this to how Republicans have voted because they've largely voted against most of these policies. Don't 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 compare. I'm neither Democrat nor Republican, but I'm definitely not stupid. I study politics 24 seven. I study policy. Compare this to what Republicans are proposing and what they've done and how they voted. Go to Congress.gov. At Congress.gov, all, all, all the bills that are in the House of Representatives or Senate and the bills that passed, you can look and see who voted for those bills. If your member of the House of Representatives keeps voting against bills that you advocate for, why the hell would you let them stay in office? Why wouldn't you vote them out of office? If your member of the House of Representatives keep voting, keeps voting for bills that you advocate for, why would you let them get voted out of office? That doesn't make sense. If you're one or two members of the U.S. Senate, keep voting for bills that you advocate for and want, why would you let them get voted out of office? Because you didn't get everything. We didn't get a George Floyd Justice and Police in that. Well, that bill passed the House of Representatives in March of 2021 by a vote of 220 to 212. All the Republicans voted against the bill. You're going to let the people who voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act take back control of the House and the Senate. It passed the House. You need 60 votes in the Senate. If you get 52, 53 Democratic senators, you can do a carve out to the filibuster or change the filibuster rule so it, it will get passed. It was Senator Tim Scott, the Black Tea Party Republican for South Carolina, who blocked the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act in the Senate. Because he went out and lied and said that uh, the sticking point was defunding the police. The Fraternal Order of Police and the, and the uh, International Association of Police Chiefs, they put out a statement saying defund the police was not part of the bill. And they supported the bill. They supported the George Floyd Justice of Policing Act. Tim Scott lied. Some people say, oh, we didn't get a Voting Rights Act. Well, the Voting Rights Act passed the House of Representatives in August of 2021 by uh, uh, a vote of 219 to 211. All the Republicans voted against the bill. The only people that voted for the bill are Republicans. I mean, the only people that voted for the bill are Democrats, and they're the ones who wrote the bill. John Lewis wrote the majority of that bill. You, you're going to let the people who voted against the John Lewis Voting Rights Act take back control of the House and the Senate to make sure it does not get passed. And they already showed you that they voted against it. And then when it went to the Senate, all 50 Republicans in the Senate voted against the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, including... 16 Republicans who in 20 who in 2006 voted to reauthorize 1965 Voting Rights Act, including Mitch McConnell and, 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 and Senator Chuck Grassley, all of them. OK, punk ass Lindsey Graham. OK, all of them voted in 2016 to uh, reauthorize the 1965 Voting Rights Act. But when it came to vote for the John Lewis Rights Act, and all of them say they love John Lewis, all this stuff. They voted every, all 50 Republicans in the Senate voted for the bill. You're going to let them take back control of the House and the Senate. And they could 
consistently vote against interest and they tell you they're going to vote against our own interests. They're telling you ahead of time what they're going to do. They're telling you they're going to hold raising the debt ceiling hostage so they can cut benefits to Social Security and Medicare that will that will harm African-American seniors. This right here, this is from the readout with Joanne Reed. Current Republican senators who voted to reauthorize the Voting Rights Act in 2006. It's 16 of them sitting in the Senate right now. And all 50 Republicans voted against the, 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 the uh, John Lewis Voting Rights Act. All right, look, we got to get out of here. Remember the African History Network, you focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora around the world. See, I deal with facts and evidence, proper documentation ends all conversation. I can prove what I say. That's why I provide you with the evidence. Who is providing you with this type of information? So you can research this yourself. Who's taking you through these policies and explaining this to you? Okay. Be sure to support the African History Network. Also, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also, through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Register for our online classes. We'll see you in class uh, this week. And uh, on Roland Martin Unfiltered, Tuesday, November 8th, uh, his broadcast starts at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be in studio. Yeah. Also, if you want me to do a presentation for your group or organization, because people are contacting me to uh, do presentations dealing with the uh, uh, Black Panther, the new Black Panther film. Um, and uh, some people have seen my lecture dealing with uh, the first Black Panther. Uh, email me AHN show at the African History Network dot com. AHN show at the African History Network dot com. Uh, we can set that up because I have a three hour uh, lecture dealing with the film Black Panther is available at our website uh the african history network.com black panther analysis african culture history and afrofuturism okay and uh this is uh, i think it's ten dollars at our website i can't remember but we have this uh in uh dvd and digital download format also all right okay right now it's correct wrong behavior it's not over till we win wakanda forever